Hey guys, hi, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. I've been flying for a little over two years now, which is just mind blowing to me, uh, but I've been flying for a little over two years and something that has remained a mystery to me is how so many different types of people can be challenged and totally mystified by an aircraft lavatory. Um, as a flight attendant, we could sit at a party and talk for hours and laugh and laugh and laugh um, about uh, just the, the, the myriad of ways that people are challenged by an aircraft laboratory. And I've meant to make this video for a while, uh, but uh, this morning's flight from Newark to Orlando was a real kick in the pants and uh, a lot of inspiration for today's video. Uh, and um, so let's start. Um, let's see. Approach. How do you approach an aircraft lavatory? I know that sounds silly, but number one, is the seatbelt sign on? <sighs> All right. So today's flight from Orlando, from Newark to Orlando was bumpy. There's a, there's a weird storm passing through the East Coast and it was just bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Uh, at one point, the flight crew called the uh, us and said, you know, fly, uh, flight attendants, please take your seat. And that's a sign to anybody who's in the aircraft that it's about to get really bumpy because when we're told to sit down, it's going to be something else, right? Um, but, you know, um, people still got up in the middle of the worst turbulence. I wouldn't say the worst turbulence I've had uh, in these past two years, but pretty close to it. And people still got up to use the bathroom. We're traveling at 500 and something miles an hour, six and a half miles up in the air, going through crazy turbulence. And people think, oh, I got to pee. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, as a flight attendant, I'm going to say, excuse me, I'm sorry, the seatbelt sign is on. And um, it's on for a reason. If a seatbelt sign is on, and especially, you know, if you see a flight attendant in their jump seat with their harness on, Go back to your seat, unless you're going to pee your pants. Unless you're going to pee your pants, go sit down. Um, and on a tangent, because you know this is my video, on a tangent, it, it's a two-hour two and 20-minute flight. And I would say today, 30 people, 30 adults, at minimum, 30 people said, expressed, I need to pee, I'm going to pee my pants. How do you function in a movie theater or at work? Um, or how did you get through security and the airport and not use the bathroom? All you had to drink was a 12 ounce can of soda, but yet you're gonna pee your pants. Uh, how did you How did you get to that point? <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, but the seatbelt sign is on. Don't go to the bathroom, don't get up unless the seatbelt sign is off unless it's an emergency. And in that case, let the flight attendant know before they start going on about the seatbelt sign. So, tangent over. Um, wear shoes. Wear shoes. Socks will not protect you from what's on that floor. If the floor is wet, chances are it's not water. Um, and people come on, you know, they go into the bathroom, no shoes, or they let their children in the bathroom with no shoes. Or they'll wear socks thinking that's better. If anything, socks are worse because they're just going to absorb whatever's on the floor. Thank you for cleaning the floor. Uh, they're going to absorb whatever's on the floor and you're going to be wearing it. <laughs> and then putting it in your shoes. Wear shoes because you don't know what's on that floor. And all sorts of stuff can be on that floor. Um, which door is it? Well, I... <laughs> Um, so I'm trying not to make fun of uh, passengers, but I think it's funny that we can all do so many things with technology, but a bathroom door really does mystify us on an aircraft. Uh, if you're up in the front, in the forward of most aircraft, you're at least going to have one laboratory door and probably the flight deck door. Um, the bathroom says lavatory on it. The, the, the uh, cockpit door, the flight deck door doesn't say anything. Um, so if it says lavatory, that's a bathroom door. Uh, if you're in the back of our aircraft, on most of our aircraft, the 320s and the 321s, we have two lavatories. Both of them say lavatories. The only other doors on the aircraft are the ones you exit from and they have windows. I don't know why it's such a challenge, but people will come back to the back of the aircraft and they look around 
as if it's this giant room. And they look around like lost. Where, where is the lavatory? Where's the bathroom? It's right there. It says lavatory. Um, opening the door. Okay. Now, on most aircraft I've seen in the U.S., and maybe I'm mistaken, I don't fly every, every carrier, but most of them have a door handle or a doorknob. Uh, and it's usually placed where you would expect a doorknob to be placed. It's not, a, where it's not placed at the top or the bottom. Typically, it's in the middle of the door, <laughs> on the right or the left. In my experience, it's usually the right. Um, and it doesn't look like an ashtray. Uh, and that's the door handle. Some of them you push, but in those cases it says in big letters, push uh, to open. So um, you would use the doorknob and it, like most doorknobs, you would grasp it, turn it and pull. Um, again, I don't know why, but we see t like all this this morning, there were a lot of teenagers on board and some adults who, you know, if you give them an Android device or an, uh, an Apple device with no instruction manual and ask them to turn it on and set it up, no problem. Blink, done. Open an aircraft door. Somehow that, that, that doesn't seem to be too easy. Um, so just grasp the doorknob, turn it and pull. I am trying not to sound sarcastic and I'm failing pretty, pretty miserably. I'm sorry. How many people can be in the lavatory at one time? Um, I mention this only because um, on the occasion, we'll have a mother or a father need to use the restroom with two of their children. They'll bring an infant um, and a little one um, to use the restroom because they don't know if a little one can use it by themselves or whatever. In, um, in our aircraft, I won't speak for everyone's aircraft, in our aircraft, <clears throat> There are only two emergency oxygen masks that will drop from the ceiling in the lavatory. There's only two of them. Uh, so if there's three people in the lavatory and there is a decompression, this is how we have to think about things. If there's a decompression or for some reason the oxygen masks are necessary for smoke or something like that, um, there's only two oxygen masks and it's you, an infant, and a toddler. Who gets the masks? So only two people of any age are allowed in the lavatory. Uh, in the case where I would see a single mother traveling or a, a parent traveling along with two children and they want to use the lavatory, I volunteer to hold one of them or entertain one of them uh, so that the uh, parent or guardian can go into the lavatory with one of them and then I'll switch it off and uh, we can do that. So if they're not traveling with someone that they trust with their child, I would hope that they would trust us as flight attendants. So only two people of any age can be in a laboratory at one time, and this is for their safety. Uh, it can sound really frustrating and inconvenient if a flight attendant says, I'm sorry, you can't take a toddler and an infant in there, but um, it is for your family's safety. All right, what to do in the bathroom? What to do in the laboratory? All right, so I'm not gonna go into the obvious, the number one, the number two, okay. Uh, well, I will say number number one, boys, lift the lid, <laughs> lift lift the seat. You have been being you've been told this your entire life. Lift the seat and then put it down when you're done. Um, so you have your obvious one and two. You're going to do your business. Please do not dispose of cans of cups, wrappers uh, in the toilet. I have had to go in with my hand at one time a bare hand to lift a cup out of the toilet. This is not a catch-all, it's not a trash can. Uh, and that one cup, if it got into the, the, the system, could potentially block it and it would be a very, very expensive repair uh, and make that lavatory unusable. And on a, one, uh, one, uh, on a 319, for example, on a, one of our aircraft, we only have two lavatories. If we have a five-hour flight and you've just blocked up one of my laboratories with a Diet Coke can, it's a great inconvenience to a lot of people. Um, lock, I'm not gonna say this, lock the door. Lock the door. There's lots of ways to make friends on an aircraft. Walking in on someone while they're trying to use the laboratory is not the best way to make friends. Um, <laughs> it's a real intimate introduction. And I don't always remember if the laboratory is unoccupied. Um, you might uh, approach a lavatory door 
it's green, which means it's supposed to be vacant. So you open the door and surprise, surprise, there's someone sitting there doing their business, shocked, um, because they didn't lock the door. For some reason, kids seem to be much better about locking the laboratory door than adults. I don't know why. Um, but uh, so green means go, red means no. Typically, in most aircraft, you're going to have a little figure um, illuminated over the laboratory. It'll be illuminated green if it's unoccupied and vacant. It'll be red if it's occupied. Look for the light, but don't trust it. Uh, because lots of times people walk in the bathroom or try to open the door and someone's in there doing their business uh, because they didn't lock the door. So lock the door. It's important. Um, do your business. Flush the toilet. I know another, I know this is a startling one, but no one seems to flush the toilet. Anytime you go in there, uh, if I go in there to like brush my beard or put my wings on because I forgot to, or use the bathroom myself, the laboratory myself, I, invariably there is evidence of someone having just used the laboratory right there. Come on. The, in our aircraft, there's in every aircraft I've been on, there's a little pad uh, near the laboratory that says push or flush. You just push it. It's super easy. You don't even have to use your finger. You can, you can use your toe if you want to. You're uh, you're, uh, you're with a shoe, <laughs> not your barefoot, as I talked about earlier. Uh, but flush the toilet. For God's sakes, flush the toilet. It's just, it's hard enough, especially when you're in position B, as I am on this trip, and I sit in my jump seat that folds up. I'm facing two laboratories, and those doors open up and close, and you haven't flushed the toilet. It's kind of like fanning this potential stench. It's awkward and awful and just please flush the toilet. It does help. Um, use the baby changing table. All of our laboratories have a baby changing table. It, it's on the wall. It folds down and then it folds back up again. Um, please don't use the um, seats as a place to change your diaper. Um, it's not sanitary. People use trays, the trays that you eat off of, that your food's on, that don't always get wiped down. I have never seen them wiped down. I'm sure they are at some point. Um, don't use the seats because people have to sit there. Uh, so please use the baby changing tables. So that's a little list of things to do when you're in the laboratory. What not to do in the laboratory? <laughs> don't throw trash in the toilet. Is it, did I already talk about that? I've had to pull cans, cups diapers don't go in the toilet uh, if you don't put a diaper in your own toilet you don't put a diaper in an aircraft toilet um aim for the toilet this is more for you guys although i've heard stories of girls not making it in there either uh but um one of the questions i've had in the past is what is one of the most disgusting things you've ever that's ever been and that's ever happened on an aircraft it just happened on my last trip uh, we opened the restroom to use the, the laboratory door and someone had urinated, a guy had urinated all over the toilet paper rolls that were in the, the bathroom, all over the toilet paper rolls, all over the walls, all over the floor. He just urinated all over the place and none of us remembered who it could have been urinated all over the place and it wasn't like it was turbulent and he just missed it this was clearly a, a, an act of will um so a little dramatic but aim for the toilet please um let's see what uh wash your hands actually this is more of what to do in there wash your hands uh, the the um this, this is a spoiler, I was gonna say it later, the water will turn itself off. So you don't even have to touch the, just the, the water faucet more than once. Hit the water faucet, the soap's right there, wash your hands. In the rare occasion, and it's happened a handful of times for me, that the water isn't working for the sink, we're gonna put a big basket of wet naps, of alcohol wipes um, in the bathroom for you to use. And I'll tell you, I can count those wipes i'll put a hundred in there and after a four hour flight five will be missing 
no one no one washes their hands. Uh, we're in a very small space, a very intimate space in the aircraft. Um, wash your hands. Uh, another, don't don't drink the water in the laboratory. Don't drink the water. It's not potable, meaning it's not safe to drink. Uh, that water is uh, in a giant tank that's, you know, they really don't wash the inside of that tank. I'm sure they treat it and all that, but there's no way to go in there and scrub it, you know. Um, so it's not potable. It's safe to wash your hands. You're not going to be grossed out. There's no uh, bacteria that will harm you on your hands, but it's not something you want to drink. Um, so buy the bottle of water in the airport, ask for the water on the aircraft. In my aircraft, you pay for the water, um, but um, it's safer than drinking the water out of the tap. The water that we use for coffee you know, and tea and hot water, that's safe because it's actually heated to a temperature that makes it safe no matter what. But the water out of the uh, water faucet in the laboratory is not potable, so please just don't drink it. Um, I've had people say, no, I don't want to spend $3 on a bottle of water. I'll just get water out of the sink in the bathroom. They've said it to me, and I've told them, please don't do that. Um, it's not safe for you. All right, so miscellaneous, like I said earlier, the water turns itself off in the lavatory. If a flight attendant, if you're coming out of the bathroom, the lavatory, if you're coming out of the lavatory and the flight attendant next to you says, oh, could you turn the water off? She's she's joking with you because the water will turn off by itself. Um, yeah, or if you want to play with someone who's coming into the restroom after you, say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't turn the water off. Could you turn that off for me? It's fun. Um, <laughs> um, why is there an ashtray in the lavatory? Chances are there's going to be an ashtray in the door outside the lavatory. There's also going to be an ashtray probably in the door or somewhere near the door of the lavatory. Why would there be an ashtray in an aircraft laboratory when you have been told 10,000 times it's not legal to smoke a cigarette on an aircraft? Why do, why do you think that's true? Why, do, why, there is an, why is there an ashtray in the laboratory? Because if you are going to break the rules and people break rules, they will light up a cigarette. It's happened on a plane I was on, they lit up a cigarette. We are surrounded by two different oxygen systems, solid oxygen and gaseous oxygen systems. All you need is a little flame and you got some bad news happening all over the place. No one's happy. Um, so no smoking on an aircraft, but there's gonna be somebody who says, I really need a smoke and they're gonna light a cigarette. Now, if that smoke alarm in the laboratory is hypersensitive and there'll be a sign to the flight attendants that someone is in the laboratory smoking a cigarette, we're gonna knock on the door saying, excuse me, excuse me, please, I, we, you know, we know you're smoking. And you're gonna put that cigarette out hopefully. And many people are going to throw it in the trash can, which is paper. You get a cigarette and a trash can full of paper. Horror story. Big problem. So if someone is going to smoke a cigarette, and I'm not telling you to do that, we would hope that they would at least put it out in the ashtray rather than the trash. So the cigarette uh, ashtray is not for use. But in the just the off, worst case scenario, if someone's going to smoke a cigarette, we would hope at least that they would put it out in the ashtray and not in the trash. Because if someone if someone was smoking a cigarette in the lavatory, there is a sign and a sound that happens that we would know, and that person leaves the the lavatory. And I would say, were you smoking a cigarette? They were going to say no because they they would be fined potentially thousands of dollars. They're going to say no. I'm going to have to go into the laboratory and dig through the trash just in case there's an, a burning cigarette butt in the trash can because I don't want the uh, something bad to happen. There is a fire extinguisher built in to our trash cans um, in the event that there was a fire, but I don't want to have to depend on a fire extinguisher going off because whatever. So that is why, long story apparently, as to why there is an ashtray in the door of the lavatory. Um, I, that's all I wrote down for my notes. 
are there any questions you have about the laboratory? There's got to be a question or two about the laboratory. Um, <laughs> oh, what else? What else? Someone asks me frequently enough, people ask me about the Mile High Club. Um, you know, uh, do people do that? Is there a Mile High Club? I'm sure people do. In fact, there was a Delta flight attendant who recently got fired for uh, something um, that was filmed. Mm. Um, I don't know how, because those laboratories are really small. I don't know how anyone would even manage that. But um, I have not experienced that. Usually a flight attendant is going to be near the laboratory and we're going to watch. If two people go in there, I'm going to be right on that door going knock, 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 knock. Uh -uh, not on my flight. Um, so if you guys have any questions regarding a laboratory or if you have any funny stories about a lab an aircraft laboratory, feel free to leave a comment below. If there's something I've missed, if you're a flight attendant and there's something I've missed that you um, constantly see as a challenge um, with laboratories, um, please write a comment below. I would love to know. And um, yeah, there you go. There's a little video. Have a great day. I'm going to um, play some video games, then potentially hit the gym. I'm not going to go. And... Um, <laughs> And then tomorrow we fly from Orlando to Chicago and then to Las Vegas. I'll be back home by 11 o'clock, 1130 in the morning uh, to be reunited with my kitty cats. I'm so excited. All right. So I will talk to you guys later. Um, fly safe. Flush the toilet. Lock the door. Bye.